welcome to today's lecture on globalization and human development. Globalization is intricately linked to the information revolution. In only 150 years, information communication technologies have made our world an extremely small place. Before 1858, it took weeks to communicate a message between Europe and the United States by ship. And nowadays, of course, we cannot, we cannot really tell a difference if we telecommunicate with somebody who is down the road next block or halfway around the globe. Information travels at the speed of light and uh, instantaneous communication doesn't recognize distance in a geographical sense. So globalization is a very natural topic to talk about. Let's start with a little exercise to understand the importance of why we have to deal with this topic of communication if we talk about the information revolution. Close your eyes and imagine somebody shopping for digital information and communication technology. Go ahead and do it. And, and try to look at what kind of ICT this person is shopping for. And then take a look at the person, what this person is wearing, if this person is a man or a woman, the age of this person that you have in mind. Try to look at the face, the race as well, where do you think this person is coming from. And now imagine a poor person shopping for ICT. You can open your eyes again. Um, how many of you imagine a poor person at the first time already? If you like most people, you imagine somebody very similar to you or your friends during the first exercise and only during the second exercise. Imagine somebody living in poverty and this is, com this is completely normal. Our default outlook on the world is that the entire world is kind of like us. And we have to train ourselves to gain different perspectives on the world. So we have to learn and study that. So the same as you can in this picture see a white waist or two black faces, and you flip around between these two perspectives, we have to train ourselves to obtain different perspectives so we can switch around and between them. And that's one of the ambitions of, the, of this lecture today, that we gain these different perspectives. This is especially important in the information age because in cyberspace, most people are extremely different than you. Actually, in cyberspace, most people are from the developing world. Um, they are from poor countries. So worldwide, um, for example, 20% of the population live in the 60th most high income countries. So these 20% have 70% of the world's income. So it's a very small percentage, people who live in developed countries, 20% uh, of the people have 70% of the income. However, when it comes to cyberspace, these 20%, they only have 30% of the world's ICT subscription. 80% of the world, the 80% of the world that live in developing countries, they have 70% of the world's ICT subscriptions, lots of mobile phones, but also computers and internet connections. So in cyberspace, we almost have, in terms of very fundamental basic access, a one-to-one -one representation. And since most people in the world live in developing countries, most people who access cyberspace live in developing countries. So it is our ambition today to train ourselves in gaining these new perspectives. And we really have to, to learn them. They are not intuitive. Our intuition fails miserably at that, as you saw in this first exercise. For example, have a look at this picture here. What do you see? Okay, and now have a look at this picture here. What do you see? So now we can flip back and forth and back and forth. And let's see if you see something different. 
And now let's check that out. What if we turn this picture slowly but surely around? What do you see? And let's go back again. What do you see now? Let's go ahead again. What do you see now? Now, even if I expose you to that, you might be able to gain a basic intuition, but it's still unnatural. Now I show you a trick. Look at the tools at the bottom and the top of the image. Look at these tools and keep on looking at these tools. Look at the tools, look at the image a little bit, and now keep on focusing on these tools. And now what do you see? So there are some tricks, that's what I want to tell you, feel free to look at it again. There are some tricks that we can learn that enable us to take on different perspectives. And once you know this trick, and you can take them on whenever you want. And, and that's the ambition because if you will work in a globalized information age, you have to train yourself to take on these views whenever you have to. And if 80% of the world live in the developing countries, you have to kind of like know how they are living. And if you want to do business in a global world or public policy in a global world, uh, or work for an NGO in a globalized world. It is very important for you that you are able to take on these different perspectives. It's kind of like training yourself to look at the globe. Look at the globe here. That's how usually the world is represented in a, in a, in a world map with Europe at the center. And now look at this world map here. It looks a little bit, little bit different. I think I was maybe 15 for the first time in my life when I saw the United States in the middle, but you can get used to this world. The world looks a little bit different, but you can get used to it. Now check out this world map here. It's exactly the same world map, just upside down. And it, it actually geographically, it is completely justified to look at the world like this. I mean, planet Earth is, is just a sphere in space and there is no up and down in space. Uh, why do you think it is that we usually look at the world like this and, and, and not like this? Well, the basic reason is because the first map makers were living in the north and, and they drew the world as like they are on top and the other ones are down. But geographically, physically, there is no up and down. It's completely justified to look at the world exactly like this. So you can also look at the world, for example, from the top, from the North Pole, like this. The United Nations logo, actually, the emblem, that's, that's, what it, that's what it takes. So this is the look at the United Nations. So there's nobody really in the corner, nobody left and right. So that's why the United Nations represents us like that. And there are different worldviews you can take on. You can get used to a map like this. You can really get used to it. And what we want to do in the following segments is we try to train ourselves to get used to different worldviews and we can just take them on whenever we need them.